I remember a few years ago, it was the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, it was beautiful. It was tarawih. I had to give talks in between the tarawih, reminders about the Quran, and we had iftars, and alhamdulillah, things were going smoothly, but something fell off. I, don't, I couldn't really say what it was. I didn't know exactly what the problem was, but I just remembered something didn't feel right. Days and days went by, and then finally, one day, near the end of Ramadan, somebody comes up to me, and they say, uh, yeah, Shaykh, I, I, I got a question for you. And I was reading this surah, and you know, this ayah came across it, and I just, I just want to know. And before I even continued, I stopped him right there. I had this epiphany. I realized what the issue was. And I said, I just want you to know, before you even tell me what the ayah is or what the question is, before we even get into it, you're the first person to ask me a question about the Qur'an this entire month. I think I gave the guy a hug, honestly. I was so overwhelmed and it was kind of sad that SubhanAllah, this is the month of the Qur'an and we're all supposed to be reading the Qur'an and Alhamdulillah, you do see that people are clearly in the masjid reading the Qur'an and praying Salat al Tarawih and listening to the Qur'an and you know, the whole month is about the about the Qur'an, so clearly we're going over it. I start to ask myself, is it possible that people are reading and they just don't have any questions because they know everything? Then I'm like, that doesn't seem very likely. And then I'm like, is it possible that they're asking everybody else except the Imam of the Masjid? I'm like, that seems unlikely as well. And so unfortunately, I start to come to the conclusion that, you know, we were just reading it, but not thinking about it. We were reading it so that we could finish the raka'ah or so that we could finish the Mus'haf, we could finish the Juz, we could finish the Surah, but we weren't trying to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us. This was so heartbreaking. And so I remember, I literally just gave the guy a hug, and I was like, thank you so much for just engaging with the Qur'an. And so I guess, alhamdulillah, I can say this year, I'm, I'm around people that, alhamdulillah, young people are coming up to me regularly. We just, we started Tarawih, and we finished Surah Al-Baqarah. Young people are coming up to me saying, you know, in Baqarah I came across this ayah, I was reading it myself, and, and I was reading the English, and I didn't understand this. What does, what does this mean? And what does Allah want from us? And what is, the, what is the lesson here? And alhamdulillah, you know, I do my best to try to answer whatever I can. And, you know, maybe I do an okay job, or hopefully maybe they can go to people much more knowledgeable than me. I'm, it's not about me. It's just, let's think about the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, just again, the other day, somebody, we had gone through Ali Imran. Now, I got young people asking, oh, I came across this ayah, that ayah, what does this mean? It's just so refreshing. Brothers and sisters, let's not forget. This is the month of the Qur'an, but it's not just about reading it. It's not just about praying with it, which, both of which, have so much ajr. But alhamdulillah, I'm not trying to deny at all the incredible ajr you get for standing in tarawih for long hours of the night. Nobody is denying that for every single harf that you read, Allah Ta'ala gives you 10 hasanat, and inshallah, may Allah Ta'ala multiply even more and more. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. We're not denying that. But the issue is, at the end of the day, the purpose of a message is to be understood. The purpose of a message is what? That Allah Ta'ala is speaking to you so that you think about it. You ask yourself, how is this supposed to affect what I believe? How is this supposed to affect how I think, how I feel? How is this supposed to affect the way I interact with my friends and with my family? How is this supposed to affect the way I spend my money? How is this supposed to affect me as an individual? These are the questions we have to be asking ourselves. And so it's only natural that if we're genuinely engaged with this book, that inshallah ta'ala, we will be contemplating, thinking about it, and asking questions. It's not hard. Brothers and sisters, everybody's got phones these days. It's not hard to write down surah number, ayah number, and say, ask this next time you come across the shaykh, next time you're talking to so-and-so, ask him, figure out what Allah ta'ala is asking of us and telling us in this beautiful book. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who read the Qur'an with reflection, with contemplation, May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who enjoy discussion about the Qur'an. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who enliven ourselves and grow with this book. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa